To Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, this beautiful Shabbat that you have blessed us with, this holy 24-hour period of time that you have ordained and set apart from the rest of the hours of this week. You have set it apart from the mundane and declared it to be a holy time, a time for us to come and sit at your feet, a time for us to come and be refreshed and renewed by your presence and your spirit. Father, we just thank you for this time. Lord, we seek your spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, we ask that you open up our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds so we could be in the proper position to receive all that you desire for us to have on this day. Father, I lift up this time to you, Lord, that you alone would be glorified, that you would be exalted, that you'd be honored, worshipped, praised, adored, cherished, magnified, that you would be given all the glory and all the honor because you alone are worthy. And I thank you in the name above all the names that of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We've been talking about, uh, over the last couple of weeks, about the Ruach and uh, waiting for what the Father had promised, as we read in Acts chapter 1, verse 4, where Yeshua instructed them not to leave Yerushalayim, but to wait for the promise, wait for what the Father had promised, and that is the, uh, the coming of, of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and today I would like to talk about uh, three things, though there are many, I would like to share uh, three things today that partnership with the Ruach establishes. We talk about partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, as vessels of honor, believers in Messiah Yeshua. We ask Yeshua to come into our hearts and into our lives when we accept Him and we acknowledge who He is and what He's done on our behalf. Yet what's amazing is that you cannot have a, a Yeshua and live, uh, have a life where you're living willfully submitted to him, partnering with him, and yet leave your relationship with the person of the Ruach HaKodesh sitting on the shelf. And it's amazing that for many believers, their interaction with the Ruach is an acquaintance and not an intimate relationship. They don't believe in the application of the gifts for the Ruach today, they view it as a one-time necessary experience lived out in the days of the early messianic body. And yet there is no Bible verse anywhere to be found that says that that has ended. Living a life without the Ruach is not a victorious life. It's not the intended lifestyle Yeshua envisioned for his body to live out. When the Ruach HaKodesh works in the believer's life, his power is released when we respond to him. He doesn't just show up and act on us. He doesn't invade or take over. He acts upon us as he acts upon us. It requires us to act with him. That requires a response on our part. We have to be willing. And when we act with the Ruach HaKodesh in faith, something powerful happens. And this is the partnership that occurs between us and the Ruach. Our relationship with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is really about partnership. It's about partnering with the Spirit of God. A relationship with the Ruach is less about performing some spiritual act. Because that's what many people think. They think, oh, you know, uh, their main focus on the relationship is, uh, is that we're always doing something. Or, you know, oh, well, the Ruach's flowing through me when something happens or when this happens, when that happens. But that's not, that's not the, uh, the case. The relationship with the Ruach HaKodesh is less about performance of a spiritual act. It's more about a partnership through which we begin to live a supernatural life. See, we always want to highlight all these big things that happen. And we think that's what the relationship's about. But that's just part of the relationship. It's about living a supernatural life through the Ruach that we become transformed because it's all about transformation, our relationship with the Ruach. To have a partnership with the Holy Spirit, I must live out of his strength and out of his power. Amen. It's not me living and doing the best I can on my own and reaching out to him when I have a bump in the road and I need that extra little help. I don't need extra little help from him. I need all the help from him. Amen. 
because on my own, I can't do anything. On my own, I can't succeed. On my own, I, I have no value whatsoever. And unfortunately, many times people want to, they want to be in the driver's seat until the, until the traffic gets really heavy. Then they're willing to turn the wheel over. That's not a relationship. But a relationship is where we're actively involved with the Ruach HaKodesh every day. Where we're letting him do the steering. Where we're submitting to him. We're submitting to his presence, his power. A relationship, a partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh is about being attentive and submissive to his calling. Being sensitive to the stirring of the Ruach's presence in his will. We need to be sensitive to the presence of the Ruach. It's not, well, we call upon him when we need him. Because in reality, if we were actually to do that, then we'd be calling him all the time because we we're always in need of him. But it's about a relationship, a partnership with the Ruach. He gives us power. He gives us strength. And it's the Ruach HaKodesh and his anointing, the Spirit of God, that gives us the source of life as believers. He is our lifeline. And as we partner with the Holy Spirit, what is one thing that, the first thing that is established is what is restored in me. A relationship, a partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh establishes what is restored in me. Now, to understand what is being restored, I need to ask myself, what have I lost because of the power of sin and death? If restoration is occurring in my life through the Ruach, the first question I have to ask myself, well, what's being restored? Because that, obviously that means that there's the implication that I've lost something and it needs to be restored. And to understand what's being restored, I need to know what's been lost because of the power of sin and death. Because that's where everything was lost. Being born under the curse of sin and death, we are damaged goods. We're tainted. We're defective. We're broken. We're broken. My identity is lost. My purpose is lost. My destiny is lost. My purity is lost. My holiness is lost. My relationship is lost. My peace is lost. My freedom is lost. The power and authority that's been given to me has been lost. And my sense of self-worth has been lost. I lost all of these things because of the curse of sin and death. But a partnership with the Holy Spirit establishes first what is being restored. The Ruach HaKodesh is the greatest healer in the world. He knows what we've been through. He understands our pain. We're broken. When we come to Yeshua, we're broken. And we're in need of repair. We're in need of restoration. Nobody comes to Yeshua perfect. We're all tainted with the stain of sin. And he removes that stain of sin when we receive him as our Lord and Savior. And he comes into our heart and we submit our lives over to him and we become that new creation. But we're still broken. We're still damaged. And it's this process of us being restored is what we refer to as the process of sanctification, the twofold part. We're immediately sanctified. We receive eternal life because we receive Yeshua as our Messiah. But then there's the second part of the sanctification process, which is a lifelong process, where we are being restored. We're being made new again. What is broken is now being restored to better than it was. And when we allow the Ruach HaKodesh to flow in our life, His presence is described like living water. 
And this is what Yeshua was trying to tell the woman at the well in John 4. And he says to her in verse 13, he says, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I will give him will never be thirsty again. On the contrary, the water I give him will become a spring of water inside of him, welling up into eternal life. He's talking about the presence and the anointing power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the water of life. He wants to give us water to drink that will quench the thirst of our soul forever. You'll never get thirsty again, he says. Well, I got to ask myself, what am I going to, what am I thirsty for? But what I'm thirsty for is our soul's thirst for what we once possessed, but lost. Relationship and intimacy with Adonai and all the benefits associated with that relationship. That's why inside of every human being is that we call that hole that's in the heart. That nothing else can fill, that nothing else can satisfy. Why is that hole there? Because I lost something. That hole is there because I've been broken. I've been tainted. I've been stained by the curse of sin and death. And the only thing that can fix me, the only thing that can heal me, is the anointing power of the Ruach HaKodesh. Being restored. Being made new again. Being restored into the image of Yeshua. And all of those things were lost when man fell. Adam and Eve lost all of that. They lost their identity, their purpose, their destiny, their purity, their holiness, their relationship with Adonai, their peace and their freedom. They lost their power and authority and they lost their sense of self-worth. They lost it all. They didn't just get kicked out of Eden. They lost everything that had eternal value. And as descendants of Adam and Eve, we're lost, tainted, and broken as well. And the only thing that can fix us, the only thing that can heal us and repair us and restore us is Yeshua and the anointing power of the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So when Yeshua talks about this water, that you'll never thirst again, that it will quench your thirst of your soul forever, he's talking about the power and the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh and an intimate relationship with the Ruach. The Ruach's anointing is that living water on the inside that works its way down into our spirit to heal the broken places within our life. You know, we, be, we get saved and we receive Yeshua. We don't become perfect. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process for us. Because we're still carrying a lot of baggage. We're still carrying a lot of mental baggage, emotional baggage, self-identity baggage. We're still carrying all that. Because that's all we've ever known in our life. And it's the transforming power of the Ruach and partnering with him and having a relationship with him that begins to heal everything that's been broken in our life, everything that's been lost and stolen from us. He begins to heal that through the process of sanctification. When you begin to activate the Ruach in your life, he works his way through your soul and begins the process of the inner healing, healing the spiritual man that's inside of us. The Ruach is like spiritual purifier. You think of a water purifier, right? A lot of people hook them up to the sinks, and what does it do? It removes all the impurities. Well, the Ruach HaKodesh and a relationship with him is, is a spiritual purifier. When you partner with him, he begins to remove the impurities from our spirit, man. That's the sanctification process. And as those impurities are being removed, we're being molded and formed more and more into the likeness of Yeshua, who was pure, whole, and perfect, and without sin. The brokenness that is inside of each of us begins to heal under the ministry of the Ruach HaKodesh. So for people that want to live a life where they say, oh, I'm a believer, Messiah Yeshua, and yes, I'm a believer, but yet they don't have a relationship with the Ruach, or they 
push the Ruach off to the side. Oh, well, because I don't believe in all that stuff. That was a one-time thing, and that doesn't happen today, and we don't have those things, and we don't have this, and we don't have that, and we don't need these abilities. And, you know, you're missing something critical in your relationship with the triune God. Adonai and his spirit are one. And partnership with the Holy Spirit determines and establishes what is being restored in me. Because our God is the God of restoration. And there are, all of us can think of a moment in our life, at least one, where we have experienced the restoration. For some, it's their health. I mean, uh, I won't mention names, but obviously there's two people in this room who, who had miracles with their health and was restored, and was restored. Yes. And that didn't happen because of you. It didn't happen because of doctors. It happened because of the God that you serve, Amen. because he is the God of restoration. So that is the first thing that happens, partnering with the Ruach HaKodesh. It establishes what is restored in me. I'm in the process of being restored. We are all in the process of being restored. In Jude, uh, Jude verse 20, because there's only one chapter in Jude, in Jude verse 20, we read, But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in union with the Ruach HaKodesh. See here, you is saying that we have to have a relationship with the Ruach. Build yourselves up in your most holy faith, pray with the, in union with the Ruach HaKodesh. We can't pray without the Ruach. We can't have a relationship with Yeshua and not have a thriving relationship with the Ruach. It doesn't work that way. We can only build ourselves up in partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh. And something very powerful takes place when we partner with the Ruach. Because action is happening in the spiritual realm. The Ruach's anointing begins to surge through us. And in that process, we become in internally stronger. We move from being fragile to becoming spiritually strong, being vibrant becoming a spiritual bedrock, a firm foundation to be built on. In our power, partnering in our relationship with the Ruach, we move from being a spiritual pauper to becoming a more than conquering prince. That only happens through a relationship with the Ruach. And the Ruach wants to lift you up. He wants to do something powerful in your life. He wants to restore your identity. He wants to restore your purpose. He wants to restore your potential. All for the glorification and the advancement of Adonai and his kingdom. See, we need to remember that Adonai is glorified. He's glorified every single time a soul is restored. He's glorified. He receives glory every single time a, a soul is restored. Because it emphasizes his glory, his power, and his authority over sin and death. He's greater than sin and death. So every time a soul is restored, he receives glory and honor for it. And we see in Luke 15 where Yeshua talks about how there's more joy in heaven over the one who turns to Adonai than the 99. I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over the one sinner who turns to God from his sins than over 99 righteous people who have no need to repent. Luke 15, 7. Partnership with the Holy Spirit establishes restoration in me. It establishes that something is being restored in me. 
The second thing that partnering with the Ruach establishes and determines is what is revealed to me. John 14, verse 26, we read, But the Counselor, the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. That is, he will remind you of everything I have said to you. Our God is a God of revelation. And partnering with the Ruach HaKodesh establishes what is revealed to me. He is our greatest teacher. He reveals truth. He wants to reveal great and mighty things to each and every one of us. In John 16, beginning in verse 13, we read, However, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own initiative, but will only say what He hears. He will also announce to you the events of the future. He will glorify Me because He will receive from what is Mine and announce it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. That is why I said he receives from what is mine and will announce it to you. Partnership with the Ruach will bring revelation, knowledge, and information to us we could never learn or study on our own. At times he is going to educate us so that it will enable us to live more like Yeshua. At times... He is going to bring revelation in order to encourage us so that we can continue our walk and stay the course faithfully moving forward. And at times he will bring revelation to us in order to protect us from danger and schemes of the evil one or others who wish to do us harm. Our God is a God of revelation and the Ruach wants to reveal great and mighty things. Partnering with the Ruach establishes what is revealed to me. In Hosea 4, verse 6, we know that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And apart from a partnership with the Ruach, all I have to lean on is fallen man's wisdom. If I'm not tapped into the Ruach and I'm not gleaning from his knowledge... The only thing I have left as an alternate is the wisdom of men, which is pure garbage. First Corinthians 13, verse 19. For the wisdom of this world is nonsense as far as God is concerned. And as much as the Tanakh says, he traps the wise in their own cleverness. And again, Adonai knows the thoughts of the wise are worthless. I need to be in partnership with the Ruach because he needs to be my source of knowledge. Amen. He needs to be the one that reveals things to me. And when we think about this, if we're partnering with the Ruach, he is the one who is revealing things. And possessing the right information Think about how important that is. Because we can all under, under identify with this and certainly uh, have experienced this. Possessing the right information, it brings peace. If you have the right information, you have peace of mind. If I know where I'm going, if I have the right directions, I have peace of mind. I'm not worrying about getting lost. Why? Because I know where I'm going. Well, how do I know I'm going? Because I have the right directions. So having the right information brings peace to me. Having the right information brings comfort to me. Amen. Having the right information will bring strength to me. And having the right information will bring joy into any situation. Amen. Because I'm not fumbling around. I'm not worried. My mind's not occupied. Well, what's the right thing to do? And how am I going to do it? And how am I going to get there? And on and on and on. And next thing you know, you're just building up all this anxiety. And that anxiety is coming from a lack of knowledge, a lack of information. But if I have the right information because I'm tapped into the God who reveals and I'm in partnership with his spirit, he will reveal the right information to me. He's not sitting there laughing at me and watching me. Oh, wait, I'm not going to tell him what to do. I'm going to see him hit a wall. 
He's not sitting there looking over you and saying, oh, oh wait, this is funny. Watch. He's, I'm, I'm not going to tell him what to do. Let's watch him, you know, fall. That's not the Ruach. He wants to reveal things to us so that we walk in the right direction, so that we do the right things. We go the right way. We say the right things. We think the right things. We believe the right things. He's the God of revelation. And when I am possessing the right information, which comes through the Ruach and comes through his word, it's going to bring peace to me. Because I know what's right. I don't have to debate and say, is this right? Or is what man is saying right? I know what's right and I know what's garbage. And the ways of men is pure garbage. They like to think that they're brilliant. They like to think they know what they're talking about. But it's all nonsense. I mean, think about just the Big Bang Theory. These people, stay, you know, they're supposed to be the smartest people. All these scientists and physicists and every other ist. They know nothing. Everything is, is, for them is based on theory, which is based on speculation. They can't prove how anything began. It's all speculation. They're missing all the pieces. They have one piece of a puzzle. Imagine having a puzzle of, of 10,000 pieces, and you have one piece of that puzzle. And based on that one piece of the puzzle, you're trying, to, you're trying to decide what the picture of the puzzle is. You don't have a box with the, picture, the whole completed puzzle on the outside cover. You just have one piece of a puzzle. And from that piece, you're trying to determine what the actual picture of the puzzle you're putting together is. And one guy says, oh, this is, this is a picture, this is a grizzly bear walking in the wilderness. <laughs> because it's a black piece. And someone says, oh, no, this is a picture of a beautiful, uh, you know, black sports car. And on and on and on. Everyone's going to speculate what that piece of the puzzle is because they can't see the entire puzzle. And then the rest of us follow those blind fools wisely, like, like as if they're wise. And they know what they're talking about. It, they, they have no clue. But possessing the right information is going to bring all these things to us. Possessing the right information is going to aid us in our walk in faith so that we walk by faith and not by sight. If I have the right information, you know what? I'm not going to be strayed by some crazy guy that wants everyone to drink Kool-Aid. Or I'm not going to start all of a sudden finding myself in some kind of a cult Because the Ruach is revealing what truth is to me. And when someone is preaching something that's not truth, and when they're preaching false gospels that Paul warns us about, I need to act on that, and I need to run as far away from that person as I can. People perish for a lack of knowledge, and the only true knowledge comes from the Ruach. It comes from God and the Spirit of God and His Word. And this is a choice that we need to make. I either use Adonai's compass as my guide, or I use the world's. Proverbs 3 tells us to trust in Adonai with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will level your paths. Revelation knowledge brings understanding. And that understanding will level your path. You know what's great about a level path? You don't trip. There's no potholes. There's no potholes in a level path. There's no hills to be climbing and, and struggling on a level path. There's no ups, there's no downs. It's smooth road. It makes for easy traveling. That doesn't mean we're not going to have trial and tribulations. But what that does mean is that when I go through that tribulation, I'll go through it smoothly. Why will I go through it smoothly? Because I have the revelation knowledge that, that the Ruach is, is feeding me. Because he's guiding me, he's helping me, he's assisting me through that tribulation. And that's happening because I'm partnering with him. 
So the second thing that partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh establishes and determines for us is what is revealed to me. First is what is restored to me. Second is what is revealed to me. And the third thing that partnership with the Holy Spirit establishes is what is released through me. When we seek Adonai and partner with his Ruach, there's a release of his miraculous work. And this is exactly what Yeshua's Talmudim experienced that is recorded in the book of Acts. Healing the sick, raising the dead. Being translated to another place like Philip was. Miraculous, great and miraculous things, impossible things. See, impossible things are possible with God. He's the God of miracles. He's the God of the extraordinary. And the Ruach wants to do something powerful in our lives. And again, it's not for our own sake, but for the glory of Adonai and the advancement of his kingdom. The Ruach wants to release his anointing th through us as vessels to reach the lost. Because again, as I said in, uh, in a previous message, the purpose of the Ruach is to point to the Messiah. The, the, the Ruach's mission is to point to Messiah Yeshua so that the lost world can find the Messiah, so that those in need of a Savior can find the right Savior, the one true Savior, Messiah Yeshua. He wants to release his anointing through us as vessels in order that the lost may be reached. Read through the book of Acts. and see the different miracles that occur. You see, the, the book is, is usually referred to as the Acts of the Apostles. And that's a terrible title for that. Because that book is not about the Acts of the Apostles. That book is about the Acts of the Ruach HaKodesh. That should be the name of the book. It should be the Acts of the Ruach HaKodesh. He is actually the main character in the book. Because it's his anointing and it's his leading that enabled the Talmudim to advance the Bessara. You know, it's exciting. Uh, they're going here and they're going there and, and, and people are believing the word and the word is spreading. And, and then and all of a sudden, by the time we get to Acts chapter 10, Gentiles are finally starting to receive the Ruach HaKodesh. Gentiles are now becoming saved. What first was just a Jewish movement, suddenly now the Spirit of God is being poured out on the Gentiles as well. They've been included in the great plan of God. And it's just, there's excitement, there's energy, there's miracles occurring. And it's all happening because of the Ruach HaKodesh, the work and ministry of the Ruach, the anointing of the Ruach. He's the star of, the, of that book. He's the main character. It's his anointing, his leading, that enabled the Talmudim to advance the Bessara. His anointing is what is giving them the strength and the boldness and the direction that they need. I mean, you look at Peter before and after. Before, he was a mess. He wasn't a leader. He was a guy that was constantly putting his foot in his mouth. He was a guy that was constantly doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Cutting the soldier's ear off in the garden. You know, that, that's going to help a lot. <laughs> you're outnumbered, but yet you're going to draw a sword. And, and what, you want to fight them all off? That's not showing godly wisdom. That, that's acting out in the flesh and in the heat of a moment, getting emotional, not thinking straight. But after we see Peter, he's bold. We see Peter after he's, 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 he has that assurance. 
He has strength that he never had before. He has a sense of direction that he never had before. And that's all because of the impact of the Ruach in his life. Because he partnered with the Ruach. The miracles that are noted throughout the book of Acts. The lives and, and the hearts that are transformed. Adonai is the God of miracles. He's the God of the extraordinary. We need to become hungry for the power of God to move in our life. Having a hunger to experience everything Adonai has for us to do and to be. We should never be content with where we're at. I don't want to be content with who I am or where I am or what I'm doing. Because once I find contentment in these things, might as well just put me on a shelf or just put me in a, you know, behind a glass case in a museum because I now became useless. Once, I, once I'm content with who I am and where I'm going and what I'm doing, I stop being useful to the kingdom. Never be satisfied with the level that you're operating on. We should always be seeking more and more, more of the, of the Ruach, deeper, greater intimacy in our relationship with him and with, with Adonai. And when he gives us a new revelation, praise him for it, celebrate it, enjoy it, and then say, I, I want even more than this. I want to go deeper. And I want to go even deeper. And I want to go even deeper and even deeper and even deeper. It's the one time that Adonai desires for us as individuals to be selfish is in our relationship with him. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to stir up a brand new work in us. Pray that. Ask the Ruach to stir up a new work inside of me. When we worship and we walk in obedience to Adonai, we're stirring up the Holy Spirit in our life. When we worship Adonai, when we're walking according to his word, we're confirming our partnership to allow the Spirit of God to work in us and through us. It's amazing that he how he uses us and works through us as vessels. It really is the blessed to be a blessing. By partnering with the Ruach, I'm being blessed because I now find myself in a process where I'm being restored and I'm being transformed. And as I'm in the process and I'm on the journey of being transformed and restored, at the same time, he's working through me to be able to help other people with their process of restoration. So it's, it's, a, it's a win-win situation. There's no greater honor for a believer in Messiah Yeshua than to know that you're partnering with the Ruach HaKodesh to make a difference in the life of another person. There's no greater feeling in the world than knowing that I'm partnering with the Ruach and I'm impacting somebody's life for the better. It's the best feeling in the world. The vessel of honor is the vessel that partners with the Ruach HaKodesh so that we may be his hands and his feet. As a vessel of honor, I'm, as a vessel, vessels transport things, vessels carry things, vessels store things, vessels deliver things. As a vessel of honor, I'm storing up the anointing of Adonai that he's poured into me. I'm storing up the knowledge of Adonai that he has poured into me. As a vessel, I'm transporting that anointing and that revelation knowledge. I'm transporting it to and from, from one place to another.
from one person to another. That's our role as vessels. We should be, as vessels of honor, we should be living the testimonies of Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me power. It, sh- it should be apparent for anyone to see when they look at you and say, well, wow, that person? Oh, yeah, they could do anything. And they could do anything because of who is empowering them, who is restoring them, who is revealing to them, and who is releasing through them. And that's the Ruach HaKodesh. My partnership with Ruach HaKodesh, it will determine what is restored to me, what is revealed to me, and what is released through me. And it involves a partnership. It means that I need to be a willing part of what the Ruach's doing. I'm not asking him to be a part of what I'm doing. I need to be a part of what he is doing. And through this partnership, not only is my life being transformed on a daily basis, but I have the joy, as a believer in Messiah Yeshua, we all have that joy to watch others being transformed because of what we're doing the examples that we set, the the seeds that we plant, whether it's giving comfort and giving hope to someone who's not saved and you're passing on a, a bit of information to them. Revelation knowledge is what brings peace. You worry about something, you're concerned about something, it's because of a lack of information. But once you have the right information and once you have the right knowledge and the wisdom, fear disappears. Because fear and faith cannot occupy the same place. See, we walk around in fear because of a lack of information. And when we start to receive that information, that fear gets replaced with faith. So when a situation comes up in our lives, yeah, we, we become afraid because it's, it's, you know, there's always the fear of the unknown. Why do we have a fear of the unknown? It's, a, it's not a fear of the unknown, it's a fear of a lack of information. Because we don't have information, we have fear. But we like to call it the fear of the unknown, like it's something spooky out there. But the fear of un, the unknown is really, it's just, it's just a lack of information, a lack of revelation knowledge. And because we don't have that knowledge, we have fear. But once we have that knowledge, we don't have fear anymore. It gets replaced by faith. So that's why when a horrific situation comes up, someone who doesn't know Adonai is going to have fear. How am I going to decide this? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? But then once we receive Messiah Yeshua, and once we have the Ruach working inside of us and restoring us and repairing us and and revealing to us and releasing through us, <clears throat> that same situation will come up. So I don't have to worry about this. He's got to cover it. I don't have to worry about this because he's my strength. I don't have to worry about this because he'll supply. Oh, but there's a famine in the land? What am I? I don't, I'm not worried about it because I know my God will supply. And we press into his word. We press into the promises. And now we walk by faith through the famine because of the knowledge and, and, and the revelation that we have and the relationship with, you know, that we have by partnering with the Ruach. Amen. But if I don't have any of those things, if I don't have that partnership with the Ruach, I don't have that knowledge. So now I'm left to panic like everyone else. How am I getting through this famine? How am I getting through this tragedy? How am I getting through this event? And then I become like everyone else and I run around like a chicken without a head. But partnership with the Ruach HaKodesh establishes and and determines what is restored in me, what is revealed, and what is released. And that is why it's critical for us to have a thriving relationship with the person of the Ruach HaKodesh.
He has to be more in your life than just some image of a dove flying in the air. He has to be. And as I close, for anyone who's never received Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, which is step one, you can have this relationship that we're talking about with the Ruach. Receiving Yeshua as your Messiah, you can have this relationship with the Ruach. He will come in and begin to restore your life and heal what's been broken. He will enable you to do great and mighty things for for Adonai. He will empower you. And he will give you guidance and direction. But it all begins with receiving Yeshua. It all begins with acknowledging who we are and what we are not. Because we're so good at thinking we're so much more than we really are. And we really have to be honest with ourselves and realize all that we are not. Because there's so much more in our life as to what we are not than what we are before Yeshua. So if anyone has never received Yeshua as their Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. We extend the offer to come and receive him as your Lord and Savior. Acknowledge who he is. Acknowledge what he has done on your behalf. Ask him and invite him into your heart to become your Lord over your life, to be your Savior, to submit yourself unto him and begin a whole new life as a new creation, a life that you don't have to go alone anymore with because you will now have the partnership with Ruach who comes inside of you and dwells inside of your spirit and is excited to be there and can't wait to begin a new work in you. So for anyone who wants to receive Yeshua, follow me in this declaration, this statement of faith, this prayer, and receive him into your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I know I am a sinner and I know I cannot save myself. I acknowledge that before you. I also acknowledge that you have sent your only son, Yeshua, to die on the execution of stake, that he died and paid the price for my sin, that he rose from the dead, and that he's now seated at your right hand in glory with all authority having been given to him. I ask you, Lord Yeshua, to come into my life, come into my heart, to be my Lord, to submit my life to you, to follow you all the days of my life. I acknowledge you as my Lord. I acknowledge you as my Savior. I acknowledge that you have done with no one else could do and that there is no other path and there is no other way to, to salvation except through you. And that now, because I receive you as my Lord and Savior, that I am now a new creation in the spiritual realm with a new eternal life and a new destination and a brand new reconciled relationship with my Heavenly Father, my Creator. I thank you, Lord, for what you have done. I thank you for the sacrifice that you made on my behalf. I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. And I welcome you, Ruach HaKodesh, into my soul and into my spirit to take up residence, to be my guide, to be my teacher, to teach me your ways, and I thank you for this, and I give you the glory and praise for this, in a name above all other names, and that of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen. 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 Just going to close with the ironic benediction. 
We also want to wish everyone a happy Memorial Day and a safe Memorial Day weekend. And look forward to seeing everybody uh, Tuesday night for Shavuot. As our counting of the Omer is quickly coming to a close, Adonai said to Moshe, Tell Aharon and his sons that when they bless the children of God here, they do it in this manner. Yivarecha Radonai ve'yishmarecha Yare Radonai panavelecha vechunecha Yisar Radonai panavelecha Ve'esimlecha Shalom The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord will make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. The Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. 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 Shabbat shalom, everyone. Amen.